of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, who by a star led wise ones to the worship of your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, 
that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The kings of Tarshish and of the earth shall pay tribute. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall offer gifts. The kings of Tarshish and of the earth shall pay tribute. The kings of Arabia and Saba shall offer gifts. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously. And the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people, and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure. From one generation to another, He shall come down like rain upon the moon field. Like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The, the kings, kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute. And the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All the kings shall bow down before him. And all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress. And the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. 
He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. And dear shall their fat blood be in his sight. The kings of Tarshish and of the Isles shall pay tribute. The kings of Arabia and Saba shall offer gifts. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. <laughs> this is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promised in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, They knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. You've probably all heard those words. Some of you may have said them at one point or another. It seems to me that it's very likely also to have been the first reaction of the wise men to their meeting with the child Jesus in that modest dwelling in Bethlehem. Let's not worry for now that Matthew is the only gospel writer to mention this visit or that the chronology is problematic. Let's not try to work out whether the star was a comet or a conjunction or a supernova, where the travelers came from, how many of them there were, or whether they used camels. People have speculated and elaborated for almost as long as the story has been told. And the three figures in kingly robes, representing three generations and the three known continents of the ancient world, even named, at least in the West, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, they are the product of human narrative creativity, of our urge to ornament, to fill in gaps, to propose at least what might have happened. From a sixth century Greek legend, to T.S. Eliot's rather bleak poem, The Journey of the Magi, to that funny, touching little opera, Amal and the Night Visitors. Matthew tells us the story he does, just as Luke tells his version, because there are particular things he wants us to know. One of Matthew's preoccupations throughout the gospel is to link events in the life of Jesus with Old Testament prophecies, 
He does it so often that even when there's no specific connection made, our minds start to cast around for parallels. The passage from Isaiah, which we heard as our first reading, and the 72nd Psalm spring immediately to mind. Both look forward to Jerusalem restored to glory and to God's reign of justice and peace, the poor and needy comforted, and the peoples of the earth reconciled. Promises in that already but not yet territory where Matthew is very much at home. They would have had a particular resonance in a nation which had been restored, but was once more under foreign occupation and oppression. The identification of the travelers as kings and as representatives of different lands, by the way, probably entered into the legend from these two readings. Bearing all that in mind, let's look at the story Matthew does tell. Wise men from the East came to Jerusalem because their learned astronomical observations had indicated to them that a new king was to be born in Israel. They stopped in Jerusalem, not because they were lost, but because the seat of power and wealth is where you expect to hear news of a king's birth. They were of sufficiently lofty status to speak with the king, but what they discovered in Herod was really the opposite of what they sought. A paranoid despot, a Roman puppet, insecure about his own throne and succession. And when the local wise men consult their books of prophecies, they come up not with Isaiah's promises about the glorious restoration of Jerusalem, but with Micah's words about a more obscure place, the relatively insignificant town of Bethlehem, as the birthplace of a savior. At this point, the travelers show their wisdom as opposed to their learning. Rather than clinging to their original plan, they are prepared to be redirected to follow new advice. Matthew doesn't try to explain how they came to find Jesus and his family, save to say that the star stopped over the right place. What do they find? Not a prince, but an infant born to humble parents. Perhaps not in the stable, that's Luke's image, but certainly not in any regal accommodation. How can they know that they're in the right place? Surely by God's promptings in their own hearts, a revelation of holiness and humility, of power in vulnerability, of divine riches in the midst of earthly poverty. They had come seeking enlightenment as an extension of their own learned quest. What they discovered was an epiphania, a showing forth of God's glory, an overturning of their understanding and a call to construct it anew. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that you can imagine them saying to one another. Whatever this encounter looked like, it evoked an instinctive response of adoration and the offering of their best gifts. Gold, frankincense and myrrh are kingly gifts, true treasures, all have resonances of holiness and mystery, and all were associated in some way with healing. The greatest gift of the encounter, however, flows in the other direction. The unsearchable riches of Christ are revealed to the travelers from afar. The word is revealed to all nations as the letter of, to the Ephesians proclaims. Our gospel this morning ends with the wise men being warned in a dream to evade the duplicity of Herod and return home by another route. But in Matthew's telling of the story, this is not a complete solution. The wise men disappear from the scriptural landscape, but Herod is enraged and orders the killing of boys under a certain age. Although there's not much evidence for this event outside this one gospel, Matthew is using it as a very important reminder that the kingdom is already, but not yet, already present among us in Christ's incarnation, but not yet fully realized, because human beings remain capable of grotesque cruelty and injustice. 
Jesus escapes this early threat to his life, but others are offered in his place, and all such suffering is a grief to God. Dear shall their blood be in his sight. The promises of our psalm today remain a hope and a striving for us rather than something to be complacent about. God shall deliver the poor when they cry, the needy and the helpless. And it is through us that God will do this if we are guided by the star of holiness and peace and justice, if we are open to epiphania, to having our hearts and minds and lives transformed by the revelation and the imperative of God's love. The journey will take us to unexpected places, places of waiting and uncertainty and even fear. We may find ourselves returning by new and unfamiliar routes, but it is nevertheless the journey home. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer prayers anew to the source of all grace, love, and fellowship, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask God to guide us with his light in this new year as we face the challenges that lie ahead of us, strong in the knowledge that Jesus Christ is with us. Let us pray then at this time for the leaders of our church, for Linda, Anne, Andrew, and Kevin, our bishops, for Andrea, our priest, and Carol, our deacon, for the users of this space, the 18th Willowdale Scout Group, and for other users as they discern their plans for the future. We pray for the refugee families that we are helping to support through the DVRR. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our world. And in it, we pray very specially for the Anglican province of Congo and for our companion diocese of Grahamstown, South Africa, even as that nation marks the loss of the Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We also pray for other world leaders who make critical choices for their nations and the world. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Let us uphold at this time the Archbishop Mark McDonald and other indigenous Anglican leaders of our church. In our own parish, let us pray especially for Douglas, Gloria, Sylvia, Dorothy, Diane, George, and Ruth. We pray for those who cannot be with us at regular worship and those shut in, Bob, Elsie, Gloria, Jean, Louise, and Sylvia, the residents of Sunrise of Thornhill, and we pray for the families, friends, and neighbors of our own parish, upholding those who have requested our prayers as listed in the bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our own country, its provinces, and its cities with the ongoing pandemic and health crisis, for those infected with the coronavirus, those who care for them, and those who are suffering the many other effects of the pandemic, for researchers investigating the most recent variants, and for the safety of healthcare workers as they face various challenges. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Afghanistan, Ethiopia, and Tigray, Sudan, Haiti, Myanmar, and all other places experiencing war and civil unrest. For persecuted persons all over the world, for justice, mercy, and humility for all governments and leaders, for prisoners of conscience of all faiths, and for all victims of abuse. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We also give thanks for the many blessings we have received. We uphold those who celebrate births and celebrated births and birthdays and other joyful events and anniversaries during this week. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you and you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to the table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your hearts with holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. 